For E.W. Marlin, the Roaring Twenties were a time of great prosperity and excess. As E.W.'s fortune grew, his plans for a new home became more and more lavish. Years earlier, Marlin had envisioned a 300-acre game refuge and summer retreat. But during a family trip to Italy, E.W. and Mary Virginia were fascinated by the 400-year-old Davanzati Palace and began thinking about an Italian Renaissance design. At the same time, wealthy Oklahoma oil man and competitor Waite Phillips was building a new home in Tulsa inspired by an Italian country estate. Surrounded by 23 acres of formal gardens, the palatial Villa Philbrook came in at a cost of $1.2 million. Marlin was impressed, but determined not to be outdone. His mansion would be over 20,000 square feet larger. It would cost five and a half million dollars, more than four times what Phillips spent. Marlin Oil was earning that much in a month. The mansion was a dream assignment for Scottish-born architect John Duncan Forsyth, who had designed many lavish homes for the well-to-do in Ponca City and around the state. Marlin directed Forsyth to treat the mansion and its surroundings as a unified work of art. Master stonecutters, craftsmen, and artists from Italy, France, and Sweden spent three years carving stone and wood, forging iron, and hand painting the ceilings. Acres of prairie landscape were transformed into an enchanting display of trees, lakes, and islands evoking the Lake District of Italy. The family's new home was more than a display of Marlin's wealth at the height of his empire. It was a window into his character. Lighty would later write, The mansion was an expression from mind into substance of the quality, the strength, and the heart of a man. Although Mary Virginia took part in early planning, she never saw the mansion completed. Mary Virginia became ill, and um, we really don't know what it is, but our, our assumption would be she probably had cancer, and in cancer in those days was basically a death sentence. He had bought her a home in Kansas City for her treatments. Now he was air conditioning her bedroom in Ponca City. Uh, utilizing the best doctors that he could find at the time, um, try to do everything he could, ultimately unsuccessful. In 1926, she died, one month short of her 50th birthday. On the day of her funeral, all Ponca City businesses closed for two hours. More than 1,500 people gathered at the grand home to pay their respects. 